The challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. When Cyrus Ogilvy came to the Yukon to inspect his rich mine holdings, he brought with him his 14-year-old son, Curtis. A few days after arriving in Dawson, they traveled north by dog sled to inspect a mine which was located near the town of Forty Mile. Curtis stood by impatiently as his father discussed the mine with the superintendent. Finally, the boy interrupted. Father, can I try driving the dog sled while you're talking to Mr. Blanchard? Better not, Sonny. Takes a little experience to handle a dog team. But I've watched you and Joe do it. I guess I'm just as smart as... Now, Curtis, you heard what Mr. Blanchard said. It takes experience to handle a dog team. Oh, that's just what he says. He never let me have any fun. If Mother were here, she'd let me do it. When we get back home, I'm going to tell her how you... All right, all right. Go ahead and drive the confounded sled. Say, Blanchard, maybe you can give him a few pointers. Eh? Anything you say, Mr. Ogilvy. Now then, Sonny, the first thing you want to do is get a good grip on the traces. Now hold them like this. Never mind. I know how it's done. But I just want to show you how to hold I know, it. I know. I've watched dozens of times. Mush, you husky! Mush! Hey, take it easy with that whip! As the dogs strained to break loose the frozen runners, Curtis laid on the whip recklessly. Suddenly, the sled shot forward. The boy was jolted off balance and teetered precariously on the runners. The huskies sensed that a weak hand held the traces. Instinctively, they took advantage of the situation. Hey, Blanchard, he can't control them. They're running away with him. Oh, ho there, you husky! As the two men broke into a run, they saw the boy lose his balance and fall off the sled. Help! The dogs are dragging him. Uh, Curtis, let go of the traces. No, we can't let go. They're twisted around his head. Uh, we'll never catch him afoot. Get the other team to chase after them. Joe took the other team. Ho, ho, you husky! Sergeant Preston was driving his sled down the hillside, bordering the creek. He saw the boy being dragged by the runaway huskies. He shouted to King, who was running ahead of the team as loose lead dog. King, stop those dogs. Stop them, boy. Great dog charged down the slope. His powerful stride soon brought him abreast of the runaway team. He growled and snapped at the husky's flanks. Help! Help me, someone! Racing forward, King hurled himself against the lead dog, knocking him to the ground. Instantly, the team skidded to a halt in a confused mass of snarling dogs and tangled harness. A few moments later, Sergeant Preston arrived on the scene. Hold your husky! Ho, ho! Are you all right? I don't know. I probably suffered very serious injury. Well, maybe not. Let's see if you can stand up. Oh, there. I guess there are no broken bones. Give me your hand and I'll unwind those traces. Oh, it, it hurts. I'm afraid to look. Is my hand all cut up? It's not cut at all. The traces left some pretty deep marks, but they'll soon go away. Here comes Father and Mr. Blanchard. Hey, Curtis, my boy. Are you all right? I guess so. It sure was lucky that Mountie's dog stopped the team. Uh, it was more than lucky. It was positively miraculous. What's your name, my good fellow? I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police, if you're speaking to me. What's your name? I'm Cyrus Ogilvy, of San Francisco. Really? Perhaps you don't recognize the name. Oh, I think I do. You're in the mining business, aren't you? That's right. Also in the cattle business, also in the shipping business. And I might add, I dabble a bit in railroads. This is my superintendent of mining operations, Mr. Blanchard. Glad to know you. I do, Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant. I, I want you to know that I'm mighty grateful for what your dog did just now. Yes, indeed. No telling what might have happened if he hadn't stopped that team. That's all right. King doesn't expect any thanks. Do you, boy? Why, he certainly is a handsome specimen. Father, I want that dog. Well, now, I can see that I blame you, especially after what happened. <clears throat> what do you take for him, Sergeant? Well, I'm sorry. King's not for sale. Oh, come now. See, uh, see $500? Sorry, nothing doing. All right, then. A $1,000. Well, I've already told you he's not for sale. That means he's not for sale at any price. Nonsense, Sergeant. Everything has its price. Uh, I dare say I might go as high as 1500 You're wasting your breath, Mr. Ogilvy. But, Father, I want that dog. I've just got to have him. Yes. 
Very well, Sergeant. You get me over a barrel. Leave your own prize. Apparently, we're both wasting our breath. But I'll say it just once more, King is not for sale. <laughs> I won't sell him for 2000 or 10000 or or 100000 for that matter. Don't you think you're acting rather unwisely, Sergeant? No, but I think you're getting pretty tiresome. Come on, King. I've got a lot of influence in this territory. I can have you broken any time I say the word. Then I suggest you use your influence to find your son some other dog that will suit him as well as King. There is no other dog that will suit him just as well. He has his heart set on King. Then I'm afraid this is one time he'll just have to do without. All right. Hunt, King! Hunt! Father, he, he's taking the dog with him, and I just got to have him. Oh, uh, Curtis, try to control yourself. I don't care. I want that dog. I want him. I want him. I want oh, him. Oh, shut up. Sergeant Preston headed for the town of Forty Mile, and the Ogilvy party followed a short time later. Curtis continued to harp oh. on the subject of King. By the oh, following day, I? his father's patience was exhausted. In heaven's name, Curtis, will you stop that whining? You've been harping about that dog for the last 24 hours. But we'll never find another dog like King. You heard what Joe said. He said King was the smartest dog in the whole Yukon territory. Yes, I heard what Joe said, and you heard what the Mountie said. King is not for sale. But you told Sergeant Preston you have a lot of influence in the territory. You said you could have him broken if he doesn't sell King to us. I was just bluffing. I mean... Happens she didn't fall for my bluff. Oh, even so, you you could find a way to make him sell King if if you really wanted to. I know Mother would find a way. I wish to heaven she'd find a way to make you shut up when you get on one of these whining jacks. Oh, I'm going to sit down and write a letter to Mother right now and, and tell her how mean you're acting. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> Stop your blubbering and I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Go get Blanchard and tell him I want to see him. Huh? Oh, oh yes, Father. I'll go get him right away. A few minutes later, Blanchard reported to Cyrus Ogilvy. You want to see me, Mr. Ogilvy? Oh, yes, Blanchard. Have a chair, won't you? Thank you. <laughs> Blanchard, uh, I'm looking for two men to do a special job for me. I, I'm wondering if you can help me find them. What kind of a job is it? Uh, that uh, needn't concern you, Blanchard. Uh, the point is, I'm looking for two men who need money and uh, aren't too squeamish about how they get it. I think I know just the men you want. Uh, who are they? Their names are Nick Adams and Matt Quinn, and they're plenty tough. They come up here last summer looking for gold, but they didn't have any luck. Nick Adams and Matt Quinn looked every inch as tough as Blanchard had described them. Nick was tall and dark, with a livid scar across his left cheekbone. Matt Quinn was short and stocky, with a crop of bushy red hair and the shoulders of a professional wrestler. What was it you wanted to see me and Matt about, Mr. Ogilvy? Blanchard said you might have a job for us. Yeah, a job that was right up our alley. <clears throat> You uh, ever hear of a Mountie named Sergeant Preston? Yeah, we heard of him. What about him? He's got a big husky named King. We've heard of him, too. He's plenty bad medicine. I want that dog, and I'll pay you $500 apiece if you'll get him for me. $500 apiece? That dog's worth 1000 even if he was buying him legally. Besides, them redcoat cops are dynamite. Especially this guy, Preston. In addition to the money, I'll pay your passage back to the stage. Make it a thousand apiece in our passage back and we'll talk business. <clears throat> Very well. A thousand apiece. That's more like it. Now, what was it you wanted us to do? I told you I want Preston's dog. How you get him is your business. In fact, the less I know about it, the better. Well, I guess that's fair enough. What do we do with him when we get him? You two have a cabin? Yeah, it's right on the edge of town. All right. Go back to your cabin and make a crate. Make it big enough to hold King. When you get hold of the dog, put him in the crate and deliver him tonight on board the Yukon Star. The captain will uh, have a cabin all ready for you. Have them uh, stow the crate in your cabin. Does the captain know what our game is? He doesn't have to know. He's taking orders from me. It uh, happens that I own the Yukon Star. Oh. 
<laughs> well, that's different. The boat will sail as soon as you're on board. Now, try not to be later than midnight. By tomorrow morning, the boat will be over the border and the dog will be out of Preston's reach. Nick and me sail with the dog, is that right? That is correct. The boat will stop at Eagle City. I'll join you there inside of a week. Now, uh, is that clear? Yeah, we got you. Sergeant Preston was stationed at the police post at 40 Mile. That night, he had already turned in when he heard someone knocking at the door. Steady, King. Just a minute out there. I'm coming. <laughs> yes, what is it? Sergeant, you've got to come quick. There's been a murder. Who was killed? My partner, Matt Quinn. Someone shot him. Tell me about it while I get my pocket. Uh, we, have a, we have a cabin on the edge of town. I was at the cafe all evening. When I went back to the cabin a little while ago, Matt was lying on the floor dead. You're Nick Adams, aren't you? That's right. Incidentally, Sergeant, you better bring your dog with you so he can trail a killer. King always comes with me. Oh, uh, wait a second while I tell the constable where I'm going. I'll be right with you. Nick Adams led the sergeant to his cabin on the outskirts of town. As King approached the door at his master's side, his nostrils caught a faint whiff of a strange and unpleasant odor inside. He gave a low growl. What's wrong, fella? He probably smells the blood inside. Open the door and go right in, Sergeant. As Sergeant Preston entered the cabin, he saw Matt Quinn facing the doorway with a gun in one hand. Don't go for your gun, Preston. I've got you covered. And don't let that dog make any false moves either. Steady, boy. So you're not dead after all, eh, Quinn? <laughs> not by a long shot, Mounty. That was just a trick to get you here. You and the dog, that is. What's the game? You'll find out quick enough. Step over there on the other side of the cabin. I'll tell your dog to stay put. All right. I said tell the dog to stay put. Stay there, fella. Don't follow me. As the sergeant moved away toward the other side of the cabin, King smelled a sudden overpowering odor the same odor he had smelled just before entering the cabin. He whirled around, just in time to see Nick Adams coming at him with a large tarpaulin. This ought to hold you up. Before King could charge, Nick had flung the heavy canvas over him, smothering the dog's attack and pinning him to the floor. Then Nook took the wad of cloth which he had been clutching in one hand and shoved it under the tarpaulin. Don't move, Marty. Chloroform, eh? That's right. Maybe we'll use a little on you, too, while we're at it. You all set, Nick? Yeah. The dog's out cold. Let's take care of the mounted the same way. Good idea. Keep your hands up high, Preston, and don't try any funny stuff. Remember, Matt's got you covered. Nick advanced slowly toward the sergeant. In one hand, he held the same cloth soaked with chloroform that he'd used on King. Sergeant Preston watched him impassively. But suddenly, as he came closer, the Mountie whirled into action. Oh, you don't pay. What is this? The sergeant had grabbed Nick and was using him as a shield to prevent Matt Quinn from firing. For a moment, the two men grappled. Then Matt saw his chance. Watch out, Nick. I'll take care of him with this gun. Oh! Nick brought his gun butt down hard on the sergeant's head. That did it. Yeah. Yeah, none too soon either. Another minute or so with that chloroform rag so close to my nose and... I'd have passed out myself. Why don't you give the Marty a good whiff of the stuff, uh, even though he is knocked out? That way we'll be sure he don't come to and raise the alarm right after we're gone. Uh, that's a good idea. i better tie him up, too, just in case the chloroform wears off. Okay. You take care of Preston, and I'll pack the dog in the crate. As soon as we're done, we'll clear out. Half an hour later, Nick Adams and Matt Quinn halted their dog sled at the river landing alongside the steamer Yukon Star. Oh, oh there! Oh, ho! Oh. Ahoy there on the Yukon Star. Who are you? Nick Adams and Matt Quinn. All right, come aboard. Mr. Ogilvy said you'd have a crate. We got it here on our sled. Can you carry it aboard, or do you want me to swing out the cargo boom? We better carry it, I guess. Nick and Matt carried the crate up the gangplank. The captain met them as they stepped aboard. Mr. Ogilvy and his son are waiting for you in the cabin. Okay, Captain. You lead the way. This is it, right here. The men you're waiting for are here, Mr. Ogilvy. Have them come in. There. He's steady. That will be all for now, Captain. Right, sir. We're ready to sail any time you give the word. So you uh, got the dog all right, huh? Yeah, sure we got him. Father, what's the matter with King? He looks like he's dead. He's all right. We just had to chloroform him. What about Preston? We took care of Preston. He's back in our cabin, all tied up. Oh, look, King's coming, too. He's, he's opening his eyes and trying to stand up. Uh, yeah. uh, 
Yes, the chloroform must be wearing off. Can we let him out of the crate? There's a fire axe hanging on the wall just outside the cabin. We can open the crate with that. Nothing doing. If I'm going to share a cabin with that dog, I want him shut up good and tight where he can't get at me. The man's right, Curtis. Oh. I say, say, look, Mr. Ogilvy. Our sled and our dog team are still out there on the landing. Well, what about it? I'm uh, just wondering if the captain could let us bring the outfit aboard. Well, why bother? Those much ain't Don't be foolish. We can probably sell the team for a couple of hundred bucks when we get back to Eagle City. We might even want to use them again ourselves. What do you think, Mr. Ogilvy? Well, I don't know. I dare say the captain might let you keep the dogs in the hold. Would you like me to speak to him? Oh, no, no, that's all right. You and the boys stay here and look at the dog. Matt and me will go see about it. We'll tell him you said it was okay to bring the team aboard. Very well, but hurry up about it. The sooner this boat sails, the happier I'll be. Now, don't you worry, Mr. Ogilvy. It won't take but a few minutes. Come on, Matt. Yeah. What are you worrying about the dog team for? You shut up and listen. How would you like to make a hundred grand? A hundred grand? How? You just listen to what I'm going to tell you. Suppose we go back to the cabin and pull a gun on Ogilvy. Nick explained his plan to Matt. Then the two men went to the captain and spoke to him about the dog team. A short time later, when the team and the sled had been stowed on board, Nick and Matt returned to the cabin. Yeah. Everything all set? Stay put, Ogilvy. What? You too, Sonny. Father, he's pointing a gun at us. Yeah, and it's loaded, too. What? What's the meaning of this, Adams? No, don't you realize that I have only to call for the captain? You it... call for the captain, it'll be the last noise you ever make. Savvy? Yes, I... I see what you mean. You're a mighty rich man, Ogilvy. How much is it worth to you to stay healthy? Say a hundred thousand bucks? Well, I, I don't understand. Well, I'll give it to you short and sweet. When this boat sails tonight, you're sailing with it. You're going to make the trip to Eagle City with me and Matt. And if you ever expect to get back home in one piece, you better see to it that Blanchard shows up in Eagle City with a hundred thousand bucks in ransom money. That Blanchard doesn't even know I'm aboard the Yukon Star. He will. You got any paper in your pocket? Uh, yes, I have a letter here. All right, take it out of the envelope and unfold it so you can write on the back. Very well. You got a pencil? Yes, I have one right here. All right. Now sit down and write a letter to Blanchard telling him to meet you in Eagle City. All right. Tell him to raise $100,000 in cash and bring it with him when he comes. Very well. With nervous fingers, Cyrus Ogilvy wrote out the message to his mining superintendent. Where shall I tell him to meet me in Eagle City? Never mind the details. Just say someone will contact him as soon as he arrives. Very well. Now, let's see what you got down there. Mr... John A. Blanchard, Royal Albert Hotel. My dear Blanchard, meet me in Eagle City as soon as possible. This will authorize you to draw out $100,000 in cash from the account of the Ogilvy Mining Company. Bring the money with you to Eagle City. Someone will contact you there as soon as you arrive. Signed, Cyrus W. Ogilvy. <laughs> I guess that'll do. You'll never get away with this, Ed. We'll get away with it, all right. Hey, Matt. Yeah? Go get the captain. Tell him Mr. Ogilvy wants to see him here right away. Okay. When the captain gets here, you just act natural and don't try any tricks. Uh, that goes for both of you. Remember, I'll have you covered all the time. Now, here's what I want you to say to Ogilvy. Tell the captain you've decided to make the trip to Eagle City yourself. But you got a message you want to send ashore. A few moments later, Matt Quinn returned to the cabin with the captain. Hey, come in, come in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Ogilvy? Uh, yes, Captain. I, I wanted to tell you there's been a change in plans. I've decided to remain on board and make the trip to Eagle City with Adams and Quinn. My, my son will come with me. Very well, sir. One, one thing more. I've uh, written this note to my mining superintendent. I'd like to have one of the crew delivered immediately. The name is Johnny Blanchard, and he's registered at the Royal Albert Hotel. I'll send a man right away. Andy, uh, don't bother waiting for him to get back. I, I want to see him immediately. Here, yeah. give him this $50 as expense money, and tell him to join the ship at Eagle City. Very well, sir. We'll get underway as soon as he goes ashore. A short time later, Blanchard, the mining superintendent, was awakened by a knocking on the door of his hotel room. Hold your horses, I'm coming. If 
Fine time of night to be waking a man up. Don't blame me, mister. I just got orders to deliver this to you. Who's it from? Some rich guy named Ogilvy. I guess he's your boss, ain't he? That's right. Now, wait a minute till I read what it says. Come on in. Sure, I'm not going anywhere. $100,000 Ogilvy. My... Hey, there's something fishy about this. It says to draw out money from the account of the Ogilvy Mining Company. That's not the name of his outfit. It's the Atlas Mining Syndicate. Where'd this letter come from? I told you. Came from a guy named Ogilvy. That's not what I mean. Where'd he send it from, and how did you get a hold of it? Me? I'm one of the crew on the Yukon Star. Ogilvy and his kid came aboard tonight. They sent this letter ashore just before the boat sailed. You mean the boat sailed already? Yeah, it sailed about 20 minutes ago. Ogilvy never said anything to me about leaving town this way. He never said anything to Skipper, either. The old man was expecting him to go ashore as soon as he talked to the two guys he was waiting for. What two guys? A couple of tough-looking sourdoughs. They came on board a little after he did. I heard them shout their names to the skipper, uh, Nick Adams and Matt Flynn or something like that. Nick Adams and Matt Quinn. Holy mackerel, they must have been holding a gun on Ogilvy when he wrote this. Wait till I get dressed. We better notify the police right away. At the mounted police post, Constable Blake listened suspiciously to the story which Blanchard told him. Say, what kind of a cock and bull story are you trying to hand me, Blanchard? Nick Adams was here just a couple of hours ago. He told Sergeant Preston that Matt Quinn had been murdered. What's that? What? Why, he must have been lying. The sailor here says that Adams and Quinn both sailed on the Yukon Star not more than half an hour ago. That's right, Mounty, they did. Blanchard, do you know where Adams' cabin is located? Well, sure, it's on the edge of town. Well, then we better go there right now. If Adams was lying about that murder, I have a hunch the sergeant may be in trouble. A short time later, Constable Blake and his two companions arrived at the cabin. As they opened the door, they saw Sergeant Preston lying on the floor of the cabin. Holy smoke. He's dead. Now, wait a minute. No, he's not dead. He's been chloroformed. Can't you smell it? Well, come on. Help me untie it. Sergeant Preston recovered consciousness to find Constable Blake bathing his face with a wet cloth. The constable told him what had happened. Looks like this is one time that Cyrus Ogilvy has gone too far. What do you mean? Apparently, he hired Adams and Quinn to steal King. When they delivered King on board, they saw a chance to make a small fortune by holding Ogilvy himself for ransom. Isn't there any way you can stop them? I'm afraid there's just one chance, and that is to overtake the Yukon Star by dog team. I might be able to signal the captain from shore. Sergeant Preston returned to the police post on the double. There he hitched up his sled dogs and headed north along the Yukon Trail. All right, on, you husky! Several hours later, the captain and helmsman of the Yukon Star were startled by the sound of shots. Silhouetted in the moonlight, they saw a man driving a dog sled along the riverbank at breakneck speed, firing off a carbine with one hand. Looks like that fellow's trying to signal us. Can you make him out with your telescope, Captain? Uh, not very clearly. Signal the engine room to stop the engines. We better send a boat ashore and see what he wants. Aye, right, sir. Nick Adams was bunking with a crew while Matt Quinn shared the cabin with Cyrus Ogilvy and his son. All three looked up tensely as Nick entered the cabin with a worried look on his face. Hey, Matt, did you hear those shots? Sure, I heard them. What's going on? Looks like some guy was trying to signal the ship. They're sending a boat ashore to see what he wants. Hey, that don't sound so good. You suppose Blanchard could have squealed to the police and sent someone after us? I don't know. It'd take a mighty fast team to catch up with the ship once we got underway. What else could it be? How do I know? Maybe the guy needs a doctor or something, and he's signaling the ship for help. It happens sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. But maybe not this time. What are we going to do if it's the law? Keep your shirt on and stop worrying. You stay here with the kid. I'll go out and keep an eye on things. The captain and several of the crew stood at the rail watching as the rowboat drew closer to the steamer. A rope ladder had been dropped over the side. The captain shouted, Oi, there in the boat! What did you signal us for? I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. You're carrying two criminals aboard your ship. What's that? I'll explain when I get aboard. Nick Adams, who had been watching from a distance, darted back into the cabin. Hey, Matt. Matt, the jig's up. It's at Monty Preston. Preston? Oh, thank heavens. Now you two will get what you deserve. You sit down and shut up, Ogilvy. Don't threaten me, Adams. Sergeant Preston will take I said you. shut up. Oh, Father, you've knocked them unconscious. I told him to shut up. Grab your gun, Matt, and come out on deck. What about the kid? Never mind the kid. It won't matter now if he hollers his head off. Just grab your gun and come on. Sergeant Preston was halfway up the rope ladder as Nick and Matt came rushing out on deck. Hold it, Preston. Don't go for your gun. And don't any of the rest of you make a move either. I've got you all covered. Matt, I'll handle Preston. 
You take the others and lock them in the forecastle. Okay, Nick. All right, you guys, start moving. And remember, no funny stuff. Go on. All right, come on. Well, Preston, I didn't expect to be seeing you again quite so soon. It's no use trying to dodge the law, Adams. Why don't you and Quinn give yourselves up? You'll get off a lot easier if you do. <laughs> don't make me laugh. Just start climbing up that ladder. And keep your hands away from your holster while you're doing it. A moment later, Sergeant Preston pulled himself up over the side of the ship. <clears throat> well, Adams, here I am. Now, what do you think you're going to do? You'll see. First, I'm going to take your gun. That's better. Now, pull up the rope ladder. There's a man down there on the boat. I know it. That's why I'm telling you to pull up the ladder. You're going to let him come aboard, aren't you? I'll attend to him later, after I've finished taking care of you. Hurry up and do like I tell you. All right. Sergeant Preston began hauling up the rope ladder. Suddenly, when only a short length was still dangling over the side, he whirled and swung the ladder in a vicious arc. The heavy rope struck Nick Adams on the side, knocking the gun from his hand. Before he could recover, the sergeant was wading into him with both fists flying. Meanwhile, Matt Quinn had finished locking the crew in the forecastle. Hearing the sound of the fight, he came running back across the deck. All right, Nick, I'm coming. As Matt spoke, the sergeant's fist connected hard with Nick's jaw. Nick slumped to the deck unconscious. The sergeant turned to face Matt Quinn. Matt raised his gun. I'll fix him, Monty. Bring him king. Matt hadn't seen the big husky creep up on him from behind. The shot went wild as Matt staggered backward under King's attack. Hey, where'd this dog come from? Get him away from me. For Pete's sake, call him off. Stop struggling, Quinn, and don't try to pick up that gun. How can I pick up the gun with this dog lunging at me? Take him away. All right, King. Down, boy. I'll take over. Matt, you're under arrest in the name of the Queen. So is your partner. When he comes to, that is. What'd you do with the Ogilvies? I'm right here, Sergeant. But Nick Adams knocked my father unconscious. Curtis, where'd you come from? I was in that cabin over there with my father and King. You mean you were the one who let King loose? He was boarded up in a crate. When I heard what was going on, I got an axe and broke the crate open. That was mighty fast thinking, son. If King hadn't shown up when he did, I'd be a dead man right now. <laughs> Look, King's wagging his tail and licking my hand. He's letting you know he appreciates the way you set him free. I guess he wouldn't be quite so friendly if he knew I was to blame for the whole thing. Oh, I don't think King would hold a grudge against you. Not if you've learned your lesson. I guess Father and I have both learned a lesson. But golly, I still would like to own King. Now you listen to me, son. When we get back to Forty Mile, I'm going to get you a puppy. You take good care of that pup, and I guarantee you'll soon think as much of him as you do of King. In fact, I have a hunch that dog will be your most prized possession long after this case is closed. Now, here's Sergeant Preston with a preview of our next adventure, the case of the Friendly Enemies. And that meant fighting against the most treacherous rapids in the whole of the Yukon Territory, and, well... I had a week off for my duties and were shooting the White Horse Rapids on the way to the McQuestion River for some hunting. We saw the canoe ahead of us capsize, and a moment later there were two men struggling in the water, struggling for their lives. There was only one thing to do, go into the water after them. And that meant fighting against the most treacherous rapids in the whole of the Yukon Territory. And, well, it was... Be sure to listen to this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, supervised by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Wednesday until September, when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck 